So you have met simple ideas of modulus before, we're going to extend that a little bit now. So first of all, some basics. The modulus is sometimes called the absolute value, meaning that it takes the um, positive value of whatever it is that you're thinking about. Um, sometimes it's used to represent lengths. So if you do something like the modulus of 5, it's simply 5, but also the modulus of negative 5 is also 5. We just take the positive value. Now, if we think about the graph of what this could um, do to y equals x, if instead we're looking at y equals modulus x, this is what happens. So y equals x would look like this, and it would have the underneath part just there. But since we're doing y is the modulus of x, anything that was negative is now turned into a positive, so it gets reflected in the x-axis. We don't have anything that goes below it. Those negative values are turned into positive values. So what happens with something like this? If we have y equals the modulus of 2x minus 3, well first of all you graph what you think 2x minus 3 looks like and we're using a dotted line for anything that turns into a negative value because that then gets reflected. You don't need to draw the dotted lines on um, and in fact if you were graphing this you wouldn't leave those dotted lines in there, it's just to help you see where this is coming from. And if we go one step further for a quadratic so we have the graph of the modulus of y equals, um, sorry, y equals the modulus of x minus 2, x minus 3. So we've got our critical values of 2 and 3 for our quadratic. So it would look like this, where we have the bit that goes under the um, x-axis will then get reflected to be positive values. Okay, so how does this affect us with needing to solve equations and inequalities? Let's work through some examples. So if we've got the modulus of x plus 2 equals 7, that means that either x plus 2 is 7 or x plus 2 is equal to minus 7 before it got modulus. So then we solve each of those and we can you can easily see that we get 5 and minus 9. Okay, how about the modulus of 2x minus 5 is less than or equal to 13? Well, this means that either 2x minus 5 is less than or equal to 13 or something happens with when it's negative and we need to think carefully about this. Now think about a number line. If you were keeping something to be less than 13 it would look like this. Now we'll we'll think about the negative separately in a moment but this um, the positive side of things of 2x minus 5 being less than or equal to 13 that's easy enough to see but what negative values would fit that so that when you made them positive they would still be less than 13. So obviously it would be everything that mirrors that down to minus 13. So when we're thinking about our negative one, 2x minus 5 has also got to be greater than or equal to minus 13. It's not less than or equal to. You should be able to see from the number line how that works. So then we solve each of those and we get that x is less than or equal to 9 and greater than or equal to minus 4, which th that one we can combine into one um, inequality because they're in this, they would, that would just be one region to describe. There's another way to do this that sort of helps with um, not needing to think about that number line so much. We can use this result that 2x minus 5 squared is, is less than or equal to 13 squared. That uses this result that if the modulus of a is equal to the modulus of b, then a squared is equal to b squared. So we're using that just in an inequality. So if you follow through the algebra there, you get 4x squared minus 20x plus 25 is less than 169. We continue through with that working out, and we get um, those critical values. x minus 9, x plus 4 is less than or equal to 0. Now we just draw a little sketch of what that looks like as a uh, quadratic there. So um, we're looking for, we've got those critical values of it going through the x-axis at minus 4 and 9. We want to know when it's less than or equal to 0, so that's this area here where it dips below the x-axis. So the solution set there is x between minus 4 and 9. Okay, going one step further, we've got these um, modulus that we're looking at where we've got the modulus of 2x minus 1 is less than the modulus of x minus 2. Now, I'm going to take you through two methods of doing this. So, first method is looking at it completely um, algebraically, considering each of the regions. So, we could have that both of those are positive. We could also have that the 2x minus 1 is positive and the x minus 2 is negative. 
we could have that the 2x minus 1 is negative and the x minus 2 is positive, and then we could have that they were both negative. Okay, so then we'll consider what happens solving each one um, to see what, the, what region it would give us. Okay, so just working through that algebra, this is what we get. Now, you can see that some of those contradict each other, so we need to work out which ones are actually the true ones. For that, we consider the range of values that would give each of those required conditions that we talked about when setting up those four different possibilities. So, on the first one, to have 2x minus 1 be positive, we need x to be greater than a half. Now you can see that that actually contradicts the solution to that set. If x was greater than a half, then it can't also be less than minus 1. They contradict each other, so that's inconsistent. With the next one, we're looking at 2x minus 1 um, being positive, so that means x has to be greater than a half. This fits with x being less than 1. x can be more than a half and less than 1. So then we test out the other side as well. For x minus 2 to be negative, we would need x to be less than 2 that also fits with x being less than 1. It can, it, we can find values that fit both x, my, x less than 2 and x less than 1. Okay, the third one, we need 2x minus 1 to be um, negative, so x needs to be less than a half. That's inconsistent with the solution to that, that set there, which was that x needed to be bigger than 1. We can't have it less than half and bigger than 1. And then the final one, we need 2x minus 1 to be negative, so x must be less than a half. That fits with x being more than minus 1, that's possible. And the second condition is that x minus 2 is negative, so x needs to be less than 2. That also fits with x being bigger than minus 1, so that, that works out fine. And we get our final solution set as being those two answers that we... Um, discovered as being consistent. We put those together to get our whole range where x can be between minus 1 and 1. Now I'm going to show you a second method which is actually my personal preference for this but you just pick whatever works for you. I'm going to use the the squared thing that we talked about before where we can square both sides of this. Okay so then just working through the algebra there we get the following. So we end up with x minus 1, x plus 1 is less than 0. So just sketch out what that quadratic looks like. We're looking for where it's less than 0. So therefore, x must lie between minus 1 and 1. You can also graph it. Um, this might be required in a question to find a graph and then go on and find a solution, or you can just use it for checking your answers. So the graph of the modulus of x minus 2 looks like this, and the modulus of 2x minus 1 looks like this. So we're looking for where 2x minus 1 is less than x minus 2, and so we're looking for where the green line falls underneath the pink line. So that's this region here. So you'd find where those two lines cross, and that will be at 1 and minus 1. So anywhere between there is going to fit our inequality.